What's up guys? Today we're testing a 2022 CF Moto 650 NK. It is pretty much their version of the naked sport bike. This year CF Moto finally decided to bring their street motorcycles over here to the United States. For those of you who do not know who CF Moto is, they have been in business since 1989 and they've been a supplier of engine, parts, and components since then. Today, they are finally a major manufacturer of complete machines. They sell their street motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides. At Tri-State Power Sports, we've carried the ATV and side-by-side -side brand since 2014. Let's get back to the 650NK and I can give you guys some specs on this machine. So it is a 649cc parallel twin motor. It pushes 60 horsepower and 41 foot-pounds of torque. Has a six-speed transmission, Bosch electronic fuel injection. It has two selectable power modes. You can switch between eco mode or sport mode. It also comes with a slipper clutch. The whole bike has LED lights all the way around from the headlights to the turn signals to the tail light. You have a 5 inch full color TFT display. Front and rear suspension is made by KYB. The front has dual disc brakes with an anti lock brake system. Fuel capacity for this bike is 4.5 gallons or 17 liters. The weight of the machine is 454 pounds. Also 206 kilograms. They come in this white model or an all black model. They retail for $64.99. That's $6,499 US dollars plus freight and setup. This bike definitely has some cool features. So for the display you can control here on the left handlebar. Uh, you just hold in ENT there and your settings will pop up. You can scroll down through the settings with the down and up arrows. Also, there's a back button on that controller. The bike does have navigation, but you have to connect the CF Moto app through your phone. I tried using the CF Moto app, but since this is a demo bike, it wouldn't let me connect. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to try that for you. I did try both modes, Eco and Sport. There wasn't a huge difference between the two, but there is a noticeable difference. You can switch between Eco and Sport on the fly as you're riding. There's just a button on the left hand handlebar, and it does change the layout of the display as well. At first, the seat is extremely hard, but it does break in. I have about 100 miles on the bike. And uh, that was one of the number one complaints I had, and the passenger also had. Another complaint I had was for the rear fender, the tail section that holds your license plate. The holes are designed for a Euro license plate, which must be a little bit larger than the US plates. We got it for work though, but the holes are perfect. I'm just popping the seats off here for demonstration. There's normally two allen heads holding the rider seat on which they're not in there uh, for this video but they're normally there uh, there's a tool kit and it comes with the bike that's how you get to your battery under the rider seat it is also the location of the rear brake master cylinder reservoir I had to play with the seat a little bit to go back on, but that is pretty common with the uh, old manufacturer's bikes. I'm used to riding bikes that don't have any rubber on the foot pegs, and they actually felt pretty good and was another thing that the passenger said she did like about the bike. Felt like she could actually uh, grip better with her shoes. The rear shock is actually mounted on the right side of the swing arm. 
I didn't see any adjustments on the shock or even the forks, so I do not believe those are externally adjustable. The bike is pretty quiet in stock form, but it does look like it would be easy to either modify the exhaust or put just a new muffler on it. There's a nice clamp right after the muffler. I will say I thought the brakes worked extremely well on this bike and I was able to stop very, very easily. The levers, both clutch and brake, do have an adjuster so you can adjust the reach on them. The grips felt pretty good riding around. They're actually fairly soft for an OEM grip. The headlights are actually pretty darn bright at night. I did test the bike at night and uh, that's something that I did like. The handlebar positioning and the bar bend they chose is actually very comfortable. Uh, if you do want to change the bar to a lower rise bar to get more lean, you can always put a pro taper bend on there. Turn signals are very bright, plus they're not overly large like some of the Japanese counterparts. Again, I'm not a fan of this rear fender here. But I'm sure someone will eventually come out with a fender eliminator to clean up the whole rear end there. One thing that's extremely noticeable on all of the CF Moto bikes is the ease of the clutch lever pull. Whatever they did, they did right with that. Everyone complimented that feel. Let's take it out for a rip and show you guys some more footage of the 650MK in action. I do want to apologize for the sound of the riding clips. I had the GoPro audio setting or microphone setting set up for my internal helmet microphone and the camera was picking up a ton of wind once you got to a uh, decent pace or speed. The mirrors were pretty good. They have a little bit of vibration in them while you're riding, but you can actually see out of them. This bike comes with Pirelli Angel GTs mounted on the front and rear. The front is a 120-70-17, like most sport bikes. The rear is a 160-60-17. Once I scrubbed the tires in, I felt a lot more comfortable on the bike. I was definitely a little bit hesitant at first, not knowing how the bike was going to handle or how slick the tires were being brand new. The front and rear suspension is KYB like I talked about and I do not believe the front and rear is adjustable so that's one downfall but I pushed the suspension this road right here was extremely bumpy it's horrible in a car or truck and the faster I went the better the suspension handled so that was actually really surprising. One thing I wish the bike had was a little bit more torque especially if you were coming into a tight corner in third. Normally you would either have to downshift to second and ride most of those tight corners in second or you definitely going to have to ride the clutch a little bit to get it to come out of that corner with speed. You know, the motor wanted to die a little bit there. Um, that leads into another topic is the slipper clutch. When downshifting into a corner or downshifting period, the clutch will slip and let the wheel catch up with the motor. That way you're not accidentally locking up the back tire real quick. I know sometimes on some other bikes you come in hot into a corner, try to downshift a little bit too early, uh, too early for that gear, and it makes the back wheel lock up and put you into a slide. This thing was just an easy bike to ride all around. Uh, power delivery was really smooth, except for maybe a little bit in first, shouldn't really be riding in first, but sometimes if you're riding in it just a hair too long, a, the fuel injection will feel a little bit jerky, but that is kind of normal now for a lot of the fuel injected bikes. I thought the ergonomics of the bike felt really comfortable, the levers were really nice, they weren't too big, they weren't bulky, they felt really good, I thought all the controls were in the right place, the turn signals made a nice click, 
actually came into this corner here in the wrong gear and was able to pull forth through this tight corner. Wanted to bog a little bit, but we still made it. I thought the bike would be great for someone who's looking for their first or second bike. And to step up a little bit to something faster. And it's not a leader bike. It's definitely not, you know, an MT09, but it still is a nice quick bike. It would be great for commuting back and forth for work. For someone that's just looking to get out and ride. Plus, it's just a sharp looking bike all around, man. Those wheels really stick out. I believe the white makes it look good also. Uh, the first time I took it to a gas station, trying to get gas with it, and all of a sudden some kid randomly comes up, you know, got quite in his mid 20s and really compliments the bike and starts asking what I think about it. Literally, the next time I go to the gas station to fill up later on, Guy comes over from his pump, this guy was probably in his 50s, comes over, starts complimenting it and asking questions, so it's definitely an eye catcher. I'd have to say my number one complaint or downfall of the bike is the hard seat, and the passenger also agrees on that, but I believe the pad will break in, it seems like after all those miles the pad was definitely softer uh, at the end, so I'm hoping that will just break in. For those of you who do ride two up, the bike actually handled really good with a passenger on the back. It didn't take any stability away, and it was definitely light enough and nimble enough to make all the corners with ease. There's not that much information about these bikes out there on the internet yet. You know, they are new to the United States, so I really didn't have any expectations before I rode this thing. I just wanted to be honest, you know, give my opinion what I thought of the thing to try to help everybody out there who is interested in possibly purchasing one of these bikes. So I can't really say that it exceeded my expectations because I really didn't have any. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect riding one of these, you know, after riding a lot of the Japanese bikes for years. But, I mean, this thing is actually pretty good. It definitely surprised me a bit. And, you know, it has a lot of good features for the price point. And I almost forgot, this thing actually comes with a two-year manufacturer's warranty here in the United States. If you guys have any questions, man, just leave them in the comments. I'm always glad to help out and share my knowledge and experience with you guys. Please like this video and subscribe for more bike reviews.